So good morning, boys. Welcome back to another session of online classes. So on my previous video, we already had a deep overview concerning why girls outperform boys today. So today we will be focusing on male educational underachievement, which became a global concern in the mid 1990s. Donc, uh, male educational underachievement, c'était un des ben, plus grands issues during the 1990s, especially in countries such as uh, Britain and Australia. So, potential reasons explaining male underachievement involve topics such as parental involvement, social identity, peer influence, classroom behavior, lack of engagement as well as the school curriculum. So one of the major reasons for male educational underachievement is single parenthood, that is the rise of single parent. The research shows that children in single parent household score below than children in two parent household. Donc, basé sur les recherches qu'il fait avant, ce uh, result c'était que ben, les enfants qui uh, grandissent dans la famille de single parenthood, c'est ça, les enfants là même qui travaillent moins bien à l'école comparé avec un uh, household qui est two parent. So the rise in single parenthood has lowered the educational achievement of children and is the primary cause of school failure and related problems of delinquency, drug use, teenage pregnancy, poverty, and welfare dependency. So boys rather than girls are most likely to be affected by single parenthood household. It has been found that the achievement motivation scores of boys decline significantly over a five-year period of living in a single parent home, while the score of girls in similar home environment remain stable. Donc, basé sur les recherches qu'il fait auparavant, les girls sont normalement qui restent pendant 5 ans de la case que tu es un single parent, c'est ça mes enfants là même qui est l'étude plus affectée. Ok, in terms of their motivation to work hard, they, they are not really motivated at all. Compared to girls living in a si similar home environment, les filles sont sont capables de rattraper sont en termes de sont motivation pour travailler à l'école. So boys are more likely to be affected in terms of the intellectual and social development than girls by living in one parent home, thus affecting their educational achievement. Okay, donc les girls sont plus ou moins affectés intellectuellement, mais aussi en termes de social development comparé à mes filles. Okay, donc tout ça là de créer un grand impact aux autres educational achievement. So in terms of identity development, it is the family structure as one of the main notions of gender socialization which influences boys and their achievement by creating expectations of appropriate behavior for both boys and girls. Quand nous causons l'identité développement, c'est plutôt relié à la famille et surtout par rapport à la gender socialisation. Et basé sur la gender socialisation, ça même qui influence un ben gars sur cet underachievement. Parce que, the, based on the gender socialisation, we tend to socialize boys and girls to accept their appropriate behavior based on their gender. Donc, c'est ça même qui influence un enfant sur educational achievement. By being outside, boys are also more encouraged to socialize in groups, making group membership 
highly valued and therefore masculine performance more critical. As a result, boys who remain at home are believed to be not well. Donc, basé au gender role socialization, nous encourage ben garçon qui se socialise en TM2 dans ben groupe ou bien faire camarade comme on dit making group membership, which is highly valued. Si un garçon y a un groupe d'amis, so this is very good. But if the boy is at home being lonely, parents tend to consider this as not being well. The socialized and indoor activities such as homework are stigmatized and not socially acceptable in peer group. Donc, le fait qu'il nous encourage ben garçon to remain outdoor more often in terms of a meeting with their friends as well as outdoor activities. So for them, staying at home and doing homework for school is not really valued by their friends. So it is completely stigmatized. The stereotypes upon the concept of masculine identity tend to dominate the educational experience of boys. Okay. Le fait qu'il comme dit même parents socialise les ben enfants pour accepter surtout les gars ou pour accepter une masculine identité. Donc ça même qui influence ce educational achievement à l'école. OK. Another explanation for male underachievement is hegemonic masculinity. The emphasis on discipline, organization, practice and hard work, especially for non-physical pursuit, is perceived to be feminine and therefore undesirable for boys and men. Okay? Donc, on ne peut que la hegemonic masculinity. Okay? So, à l'école, nous mettons en face plus que de l'organisation, la pratique, hard work, la discipline. Tout cela, normally, is being viewed as being feminine, and this is viewed as being undesirable for boys and men, because they tend to focus more on hegemonic masculinity. So when we're talking normally about hegemonic masculinity, it concerns about characteristics such as, which consist of domination, strength, competitiveness, Sport, courage, and aggression. Okay? Donc, quand nous parlons de hegemonic masculinity, il est surtout relié à des caractéristiques telles que la dominance, strength, la compétition, surtout côté outdoor activities such as the sport, courage, et surtout, vous exprimez vous même par rapport à l'utilisation uh, of aggression. Okay. Donc, hegemonic masculinity en termes de boys and their achievement is seen to be the root cause which tend to impact on several other factors such as the school and classroom environment and teacher, student, family and peer dynamic. Donc, on peut que l'eau Hegemonic masculinity, les reliés surtout les impactés surtout l'eau les autres facteurs aussi, tels que l'école avec classroom sur environnement, surtout la ben, relation entre teacher et student et la famille et aussi ben camarade peer dynamics. Donc, when we are talking about hegemonic masculinity. Donc, hegemonic masculinity les push boys towards following a particular kind of behavior and also making specific choices. So much, if boys do not fall into the line, they are isolated and also they are bullied by their friend. Donc, comme on dit les autres, Hegemonic masculinity is surtout relié avec la dominance, strength, competitiveness, sport, courage, and aggression. Si ben garçon pas adopté sa même type de behavior là à un jeune âge, what happen is they will be isolated, especially with uh, by their friend, and also from time to time they're going to be bullied. 
okay so this type when adopting this type of behavior at the school this impact very negatively in terms of the educational achievement also okay now we have the racialized perspective of masculinity so when we're talking about race, race is a very significant factor which tend to affect the male academic performance. And when we're talking about race, it is uh, related to ethnic minority group. Okay, so black and Af black African American students continue to underperform in school because of their cultural opposition to acting white particularly believing they do not receive comparable returns for their hard work in school relative to the white. Okay? Don't connect because of racialized perspective of masculinity. Don't in a certain ethnic group who tend to underperform at school. Why? Because they tend to think, especially they think that they are being discriminated at work. However, uh, work, uh, hard work they are going to put into their work, they will not receive the recognition for it, surtout par rapport as a teacher, uh, compared to the majority, that is the white population. So according to David Gilburn, the professor of critical race study at the University of Birmingham, he said academic performance, expectations about behavior and race are more likely to in impact on black boys. Okay, so when we're talking about expectation of behavior, surtout les profs, les relatifs à teacher, et la même professeur, même avant qu'ils aient connu un enfant, ce vrai caractère, comme elle y était, they tend to have a perception of the child based on his physical appearance. So this tend to impact on the child educational achievement, surtout les garçons. Quand ils trouvaient qu'il y avait un professeur qui fait un propos discriminatif dans la classe, so what happens is that they tend to adopt the hegemonic masculinity, ou bien sa caractéristique of masculinity, like when they will rebel against that teacher. And from time to time, this is they will not feel motivated to work at all in that teacher's class. Or même professeur là, arrive un moment, même enfants là, ils peuvent faire ces efforts de ce côté. Professeur là, ils peuvent déjà une perception qu'ils enfants là, ils ne pas pour work well because he is a black American child. Okay, so this is for ethnic group. Another reason is due to boys' classroom behavior. When talking about boys' behavior, the need for macho identity and laddish behavior of boys in school has been considered as one of the major reasons for the underachievement of boys in the in many country contexts. Donc, si vous trouve par rapport à Maurice même, pas que les autres pays, mais à Maurice, si nous faire une analyse par rapport à résultat ben garçon et ben fille. Je peux trouver basé sur les statistiques qui c'est une fille qui travaille plus bien par rapport à performance des, des examens. And one of the reasons that we can say why boys tend to underachieve, c'est parce que they tend to adopt a laddish behavior. Okay? So laddish behavior is a term which has been used in the 1990s in the UK context to explain the anti-school behavior of working class boys. And uh, it has been found now, it has been found its way into the academic discourse around the issue of boys and their achievement. So when talking about laddishment, it is often considered to be a group behavior that is performed against this stereotype threat and is termed as being attention seeking by teachers. So when we talk about the laddish behavior, obviously it is a type of behavior which is considered as being negative. Okay, surtout quand nous causons laddish behavior, c'est surtout relative as dis, uh, disruptive behavior ou bien 
attention seeking type of behavior in class so you have to disturb the whole class so this is mostly associated by boys so boys often use the laddish behavior within the classroom as a defense mechanism against stereotype threat which means they behave in a way that avoid being singled out even if it is not necessary the behavior they believe to be correct so they tend to use the laddish behavior to as a defense mechanism okay against the stereotype threat so what happened is that Boys tend to adopt such behavior, especially to show that they are not feminine. They, are, they do not have any feminine characteristic. Mais aussi, nous, ben, par rapport à ceux ben camarade, among their peers, the student is going to be regarded as being cool and popular also. And also by adopting such type of behavior, c'est surtout in response to the fear of failure. Meaning that by acting as being cool or acting as being unbothered, so the student is going to, to think that they do not fear about failing. They do not really bother about failing. And if ever they fail, they would not look that bad because they are very courageous by adopting such behavior in class. Now concerning students' engagement c'est surtout par rapport à engagement towards their education quand nous causons boys and girls they tend to have different engagement with regard to their education so research indicates that it is prevalent in australia the uk and the united states to find to find that both Male and female teachers perceive girls as being easier to teach, compliant, and less likely to challenge authority. Donc, par rapport à l'étude qu'il fait en Australie, en UK and the US, il remarque, il fait remarque qui ben teacher, zut both male and uh, female teachers, se trouvait qui ben typique plus facile to work with, that is to teach. And also, they are less likely to challenge authority. Ça veut dire en termes de classroom management, pour ben pour contrôler ben si fille plus facile. Whereas boys requires a more authoritarian control for them to be taught. Okay, ça veut dire dès au commencement, un professeur du moment libre dans classe, c'est bien important surtout quand il peut travailler avec les garçons. C'est libre d'establish a more authoritarian control for them on them. Okay, otherwise it is going it is going to be very difficult to control the whole class. Also other class also indicated that attention was given primarily to individuals who were who were disruptive in class. Donc normalement par rapport à semaine l'étude qu'il fait là quand en termes de classroom management when we are giving when teachers are giving attention to students c'est surtout pour ce qui veut faire plus beaucoup, uh, they are more disruptive in class. And also, teachers are giving attention to students who are mostly disruptive, but also they are very uh, mischievous students. And while it was negative, boys were given the dub, were given double the attention as compared to girls due to less engagement from their behalf in their studies. Donc, la plupart du temps, surtout par rapport à ben, l'école garçon, que si nous avons une certaine période de temps pour travailler avec une classe, surtout quand il y a un garçon, you will see that most of the three quarters of the time is going to be on classroom management. Why? Because boys tend to be less engaged in their studies. And they are most likely to be disruptive in class. So this tend to affect their educational attention, uh, attainment also. And also another reason is educators' perception. So past researchers indicates that teachers have different behaviors towards male and female students. And it is due to teachers' perception, that is, their attitude 
towards their students. So to en termes de gender role, which lead to the existence of societal stereotyping. So evidence suggests that teachers are the most important school-based influence on student academic performance. And boys are increasingly lacking behind girls at school. This disadvantage has important consequences. Boys who fall behind are at risk of dropping out of school, not attending college or university, or being unemployed. So what happened is that one of the major thing that we have today, one of the major concerns that we have today is that boys are falling behind or lacking behind at school. And this is going to have a major consequence in the future. For example, they will not be able to attend, they will be dropping out of school at an early age and also they will not be able to attend college. Thus, in the future, they will end up being unemployed. So even if most teachers try to be fair and strive to provide equitable learning opportunities for all students, so studies have pointed out that teachers generally have lower expectations of boys' academic performance and behavior in school. Du moment qui ben professeur commence travail dans l'école mix, so it is obvious they already have the perception that the boys are not going to work well in terms of the academic performance, but also in terms of their behavior in the school or in the class, they are going to be very disruptive. Donc, dès au commencement, boys are considered as being unachieving and troublesome, whereas girls are always being considered as being independent and motivated in high achieving. So based on uh, studies which has been done in Sweden and uh, Finland, they have shown that girls and boys have different ways of approaching work in school. Donc, ben, si fils de a différents approches par rapport à ce travail, surtout les garçons aussi. So, girls have an orientation towards progress and how to learn, while boys more often compete and are performance-oriented. Donc, les filles, ben, professeuse de dans sa perception-là, les ben, enfants. Donc, les filles qui ben, diffusent cette orientation si tu es par rapport à progrès, par rapport à l'étude et comment je tu peux apprendre et qui, comment je peux appliquer. Mais par contre, tes garçons, nous te focus plus que tes compétitions et aussi par rapport à performance oriented, orientation. So, boys in secondary school start to show avoidance strategies which entail a pressure to cope with school work with minimal effort. Donc, quand nous donnons des stratégies à mes enfants qui sont supposés appliquer dans le travail, ben, les garçons sont trop en façon plus facile pour compléter le travail. Là. So, this tend to affect their educational achievement. And also, boys are often, uh, often get more attention in class. When we're talking about attention, c'est surtout négative attention. Parce que they tend to, when we are doing a class discussion, make as if the teacher is asking a question, what happens is that boys will tend to dominate the talk space and they will be completely irrelevant. So all the boys talk more with their teachers. Studies have shown that these interactions often have the aim to correct un undesirable behavior. C'est par rapport à undesirable behavior. Whereas teachers tend to perceive girls as being hardworking and producing higher quality in their work than boys. When we're talking about presentation of work, la plupart du temps c'est comme ça. Dans une école de filles, du moment d'un projet, you will get three quarters of the project work in a class. Mais pour les garçons, in terms of presentation of work, they will completely forget about the work. So this tend to be teachers' perception. And also, girls are also associated with higher communication skills, being organized and also being independent. However, boys are, are perceived as being ill-prepared, less motivated and also childish, according to younger Etel. This becomes re uh, relevant when teachers' expectations affect their students' academic outcomes and teachers have higher expectations for students, 
that the whom they perceive as being self confident independent and having positive work habits okay ce du moment qui est un professeur, il finit une perception comment ben garçon était comment ben fille était donc ça lui affecte ses behavior, ça affecte ses performances surtout si tu les tenais trop ben tu fais as being confident, independent or having very positive work habit, so we tend to have the perception that girls are very hardworking and they will perform well compared to boys. So boys are assessed based on the competence they cannot do or do not want to do and boy, uh, girls are assessed based on what they accomplish and they have their compliant behavior. Okay, donc ça c'était sur boys underachievement. These are the reasons why boys tend to underachieve at school. Okay, so this, this was the explanation for boys underachieve.